what is uh, economics of education so economics of education usually we mean it uh, those issues of education which are directly or indirectly related to economics so for example when you have educational development it leads to social development it leads to economic development so when you discuss the relationship between educational development with economic development this becomes a part of the economics of education similarly when you go for the uh, educational training and higher or higher education your efficiency is increased so it is economic efficiency so that is also part of the economics of education when educational development or imparting of higher education leads to improvement in efficiency of a person then that is also part of the economics of education if we can bring about equitable distribution in the society or we can say distributive justice in the society through educational development that also brings out the uh, economics of education that's because distribution of income and wealth is a part of economics <coughs> similarly when you go for the manpower planning or education that is related to the educational planning so the, the basic problem i'll discuss in detail the basic problem in the today's society is the problem of unemployment basically educated unemployment problem and this is because of basically we don't have any educational planning we don't have any manpower plan so this manpower planning is a part of the economic decision making process that is also i just plan to discuss here uh, in the economics of education finally the financing of education this is also part of the economics of education so these are the broad uh, five areas which i will discuss in this particular two three classes there are number of studies and who is indicate that if there is an educational development particularly improvement in the education and training of persons it leads to economic development of a country and regarding that there was one professor from america his name is professor denison he made a study in the american economy and tried to find out what is the relationship between educational development and economic development of a country educational development in the sense of improvement in quality of education it is not the horizontal expansion not only the horizontal and vertical expansion it is the quality of education when there is improvement in quality the nation found out that that it leads to improvement in the per capita income of the country gross domestic product of the country the income of the country is improved if there is improvement in the quality of education for example suppose if you have more engineers if you have more technocrats if you have to say persons with a high high degree of training then definitely the efficiency increases productivity increases and this leads to increase in income of the country so that he found out with a survey that he found out that 23% of the national income of usa increased because of improvement in quality of education and training so this indicate that educational development then there will be improvement in uh income generation and the gdp of the country there is a great economist uh, the adam smith is 1976 he wrote a book wealth of nations and there he mentioned the human being as a efficient machine so in the sense that if the quality of the human being could be improved then just like a efficient machine the productivity of the country will also increase so he predicted long back more than 200 and 25 years back and so what about the uh, the propagation made by adam smith what about the empirical finding made by professor denison it indicates that when there is an improvement in quality of education there will be improvement in the national income of the economy then there will be improvement in gdp and there will be improvement in economy well being of the people just to justify that particular point i take this particular table that there are three types of country i have selected so these are the, that are related to 2005 world development report so based on this report the world bank has classified the countries into three groups low income nation middle income nation and high income nation and those countries are called low income nation the per capita income is less than 5000 dollar 5000 dollar it is called ppp dollar i just tell you the per capita income of india as on today in 2006 2007 it was 3460 dollar and this is called ppp dollar actual dollar is less than that but ppp dollar is that compared to the purchasing power parity with 1 dollar 45 rupees whatever you can purchase in here the same 1 dollar you cannot get the everything in uk or in usa you need 3 dollars there so 1 dollar is equivalent to 3 dollars so actually this purchasing power parity means it is the all internationally measured value of dollar 
Actually, our income may be 1,500, but in compared to the cost of living, cost of living in USA or Japan or any other country, then actually it is equivalent to 3,472. Now, this is what is actually PPP, per capita income in PPP US dollar. Now, those low, low income nations are those nations. Uh, basically, they belong to the country like uh, the South Asian countries, India, Pakistan, Bangladesh, Nepal, all the South Asian countries, and most of the African countries, and a few South American countries. They belong to this particular group of countries. So, this is called low income nation. And the middle income nation are those countries like uh, most of the countries of Southeast Asia. Singapore, Thailand, Indonesia, even Korea, North Korea, South Korea. So these are the countries, then some of the countries of Middle East, not all, but many of say Iran, Iraq, these are these are the countries belonging to the middle income nation. Then many countries in South America and South Africa. South Africa is not a developed country, but it is the middle income nation. So these are the countries which belong to the middle income nation. And the high income nation, obviously, USA, UK, Japan. Australia, Canada, these are the countries and most of the uh, European countries. So these are the countries belonging to the high income nation. Now you just have a look in this particular table. In the high, this, these, are the, these are the average income in the low income nation, middle income <coughs> nation and high income nation. These are not my statistics. These are the statistics of the World Level of Report prepared by the World Bank. Now just imagine where we stand today. Our per capita income is 3, 4, what I say? 3, uh, 3, 4, 6, 0. And China's per capita income is uh, 6, 6, 6, 0, 0. China. And Sri Lanka, Sri Lanka is 4, 5, 7, 0. I'm just giving the Indian subcontinent. Pakistan is 2, 0, 5, 0. And Bangladesh is 2090. Now, where do you stand compared to compared to China? We are almost half. So our the standard of living is almost half of that of the China. Even 50% lower than the Sri Lanka. Now, when you compare to the the high income nation. 10 times, they are per capita income 10 times that of India. Now where we stand, just imagine. We have a lot of planning for the last 50, 50, 60 years. So many schemes are adopted by the government. In spite of that, in spite of that, see the position we are having today. We are staying in the urban area, you do not know the poverty in the rural areas. Actual poverty, you cannot measure in terms, in terms of the standard of living in the urban area. Uh, now, at the same time, you just see, when you talk about educational development, many things come. One is that general literacy rate, adult literacy rate, educational infrastructure, all these are constituting the educational development. But I am taking just only one indicator. That indicator is the adult literacy rate. And the country where the per capita income is low, low income nation, 2486 dollar per year, and the literacy rate is 62%. And the slightly improved country, like middle income nations, where per capita income is 7195, then the adult literacy rate is 90%. And the high income nation, socially, economically, technologically developed, per capita income is about 32,000, 33,000 dollars, then the adult literacy rate is almost 99%, almost 100%. All are almost literate. So they just see that there is a relationship between these two. When you have higher income, you can provide better education facilities, so your education development is high. You have better literacy rate, you have better high, better adult literacy rate. So, this indicates that there is a close relationship between these two. 